Let's talk about users and groups and a little bit of the user and group administration and security. Right here, we're in a Windows 7 computer and we'll go to user accounts within the control panel to make modifications to our users. Here we see the administrator account I'm using and you can see that it's password protected. If it wasn't, then we'd want to change the password and we want to make sure we have a complex password. You can also manage other accounts. If we go to another account here, you'll see the list of accounts that are on this system. For example, we have the administrator account called Lampercles and the guest account. We could also create a new account from here. And by default, we get two options. And I'll call this guy test user eight. You could make this a standard user, which is a regular user that cannot change system settings, but can use programs. Or you could be an administrator, which has full control over the system. We're going to leave it as standard user, create the account, and then you can see here it says test user 8, standard user, but it doesn't say anything for the password, which means we don't have one yet. This account, password protected. This one is disabled. The guest account is off. This one does not have a password. So we could click on that and change the password if we need to. Click on create password, confirm it, and you could use a password hint if you want. Create the password, and now it says password protected. If we go to back to manage another account, you'll see that we have these three here. Now, this user account section in Windows 8 works a little bit differently. If we go to Windows 8 system right now and go to the control panel, Go to user accounts. You'll see the same name, same administrator, user account. I mean, it's a different account on this system, but I'm using the same name. And that makes it easier for me. If you have the same name and same password, you can easily access shares back and forth between computers. But if we go to manage another account, you'll see the list. You'll see the administrator account here. The guest account is off. But if we want to add a new user, that's done in PC settings, which is more the uh, Metro UI version or portion of Windows 8. And we could add the account from here. And it's a similar process, and you want to make sure that you have a password. But the better way to do this is to do this in computer management. If you're a techie, computer management is the best way to go. So if we right-click on the Start button and go to Computer Management, that'll bring up our Computer Management Console window. And here we have local users and groups. Expand that, and we can look at the users that are here. And we can create new users from here. We can right-click and select new user, or go to action and new user, or down here. A lot of places to do it. doesn't really matter, but we go to new user, and we'll say create a test user here. And you could give it a password right now, or you could see user must change password next logon. So you could have the actual person who's going to use this account go ahead and do the password themselves. That's a self-managed password maintenance. Or you could deselect that and you set the password. And you have some other options here. You could disable accounts here if a person is terminated or their contract ends or they just need to be disabled for another reason. So you could see a lot more functionality here. So I'll go ahead and put a password in for that guy now. And we'll say password never expires. No, we're not going to say that. Generally, you don't want to do that. Generally, you want to use a policy that states that the password will expire after, say, 30 days or so. And we'll talk more about password best practices in an upcoming lesson. And by the way, you want to make sure that the password meets complexity requirements if you have that turned on in your policy. And we'll go to create, and it makes the new user. When we click close, that one shows up there. You can enable or disable accounts by right-clicking them and going to Properties and saying Account is Disabled. If you click on that and click OK, you'll see the down arrow here. And the same holds true for the guest account and administrator account. The main built-in administrator account, those are disabled by default. So lots of user management that you can do here. Now, a user can be a standard user, as we said and can open programs but can't really change the system, or the user could be an administrator and have full power over the system, 
or it could be a guest which has extremely limited access, but there's other categories that these users can be part of, and they're known as groups. If we click on groups here, you'll see the entire list. Administrators we mentioned, but there's plenty of others. Backup operators, Hyper-V administrators, IIS or Internet Information Services users, perform performance log users, power users, and there's a ton of them. There's a ton of categories that all have different levels of access. But for the A plus exams, you need to know the administrators, the guests, the standard users, and they also want you to know power user. Now power users were famous back in the days of Windows XP and older. Now with Windows, the power user is just a standard user, but the group is kept for backward compatibility. So if you import a power user from an older version of Windows, but generally we don't use that anymore. You just want to know that the power user used to be something that had some administrative capabilities. It could install drivers and programs, but not full access to the system the way an administrator would have. So you want to know the administrators, the standard users, the guests, and the power users group. And you can add users to these groups if you're an admin. So for example, if we look at the users group, if we double click on that, and then this is an actual user account, test user. You see the users, a little person, and a display there. And you could do that for any of these. If you double click on administrators, you'll see the main administrator account, which is disabled, and then the administrator account that I use. And that's the best way to do it. In fact, we all did this for the longest time, and then Microsoft incorporated this into the operating system. This guy is disabled and kept on the shelf, so to speak, as a backup admin account in case your main admin account fails. And you can also add users. You could do this in a variety of ways. You can add users to groups. If we say go to users and go to test user and double click that person, and we go to the member of tab, you'll see that we have this person as a member of users, which is standard users, and home users for home groups. But we could add that user and say type in administrators. Click OK. Now that person's a member of the administrators group. Click OK for that. And if we go to groups and go here to administrators and double click that, you'll see test user has been added. You could do this for any account. We have my main administrator account. If I double click that, go to member of, you'll see he's a member of the home users and administrators. So he has full power. So users and groups understand the difference. The group is used to take the users and put them all together into a container so that we can later add permissions to all those users at once. And you can create your own groups if you wish. Quite often, I'll do it by the department of the company. For example, marketing. And click close. Now we have the marketing group. And I could add whatever users I wish to that group. But these are containers for users. And it makes it easier to assign permissions to multiple users at the same time. For example, everyone in the marketing group. So a little bit of the functionality there. Um, you also want to secure these. And by default, you wanna make sure that the administrator account and the guest account are disabled. So again, if we went to the properties of that guy, you'll see here, account is disabled. If you ever need to disable account, you check mark this. And that will make it so nobody can use it until you enable it in here or in the command prompt. And remember that the administrator and guest accounts in Windows are disabled by default. Now, the other thing is you want to have a complex password. So if you need to change the password, we showed how to do that in the control panel, but you could do that here also in computer management by right-clicking the user and saying set password. And proceed. And we already had a password. We don't even have to type the old one in here as an administrator. We just type the new password. And confirm it. And click OK and it says the password has been set. So that's good to go. So a little bit about user management and a little bit of the security of these guys. 
Make sure that you know how to access this within user accounts in the control panel and more importantly, in local users and groups within computer management. And finally, know the difference between the administrators group, the guests, the standard users, and the power users. And that's it for this sub-lesson.